And we saw what homelessness can do and what can be done about it. I ask you to jot down your questions. Maybe you have questions. And uh, if they can answer, good. If not, at least we have an opportunity to say, you know, this is my question. So is there anybody that has the first question? I'm looking. If you have no question, how about comments? Oh, there's somebody who has a question. Question or comment, sir? Tell us who you are. I know who you are, but they may not. Uh, my name is Nicholas Benson. And I'm here with everybody. Um, this is a conference on governance. Uh, what is that doing to us since we are all just preachers in the church? How does that relate to us? That's the question. That's it. Wonderful. What, what does that mean to us as pastors and ministers? And Dr. McFarland has the answer. <laughs> um, again, when we look at yes, when we look at this uh, conference, this is a leadership and governance conference, which I believe the governance I, I could stand to be corrected has everything to do with the government of God and us addressing also as uh, kings and priests, not just preachers in the church, but as kings and priests, fivefold ministry gifts. Uh, the impact that we should be having on this government. And the problem is, I think, in the body of Christ, we're, we're so concerned with what's going on within our four walls that we're missing the greater opportunity to be uh, an extension of the kingdom of God uh, to this nation because we actually have, collectively, we have the answer that the world needs. And so therefore, I believe that when we are all uh, aligned with the order of God, when we're aligned with our kingdom assignments, we, we understand the dynamics of the assignments and value and respect for each other's leadership roles. And then as we come together, because we talk about movement, movement, movements are created to move things. And so therefore, each and every one of us together as uh, as the body of Christ, as a reflection of God, uh, we have an anointing to cause things to shift, to cause things to change, amen, as we not only uh, uh, snatch souls from the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of uh, uh, God's dear son, Jesus, but also make an impact on this world to be a demonstration of God for this world and for those who were here and receive uh, a, a righteous word and demonstration of God to return to God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we have two or three more. Make your uh, comments a little shorter if you can, because we are going to go to another session in a little while. If you stand up, tell us who you are. I'm Dr. McGavick. Listen, um, God puts the governments in place Okay? It says that's the Bible we all read that. The trouble is, godly people aren't taking their place that's it. for God to use them. This country was formed on the Word of God. It was blessed by the Word of God. We became very successful. We need to get the world back. The Philippines has changed its idea to <coughs> the country is dedicated to the Word of God. They are becoming very successful. This could be a world-changing concept, and that's what this is about. Governance by the people of God, for the people of God. Amen. One more review. Thank you.
people who have been killed as uh, a result of uh, their faith. And my wife would have shared that if she was here, but we are on child watch. Our last child is expecting a baby any minute from now. So she was unable to be here. I was uh, touched. And I think that challenges the church. It challenges us as Christians of what is our mission. You know, the first thing that Christ said, I present the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God is here. And I think it's our responsibility as Christian leaders to take the kingdom of God out there to the persecuted church, to the homeless, to the refugees, many of whom are in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. I was kind of deeply, I was really deeply touched by that uh, presentation. And I do hope that as leaders here, we can take steps to reach out to these people who are homeless, who are refugees, refugees not by their own fault, by, but by circumstances that have forced them to be in that situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else? The reason we have this, the reason for this conference is to bring everything on the table and then whatever you say, whatever you think, whatever answer you give, whatever questions you bring, we're going to take it together and make it our issue because that's what we are here for, to make a difference. I want to have a look at to uh, just those, the four components of the model that God has given you in terms of your strategy in turning a uh, community, which ultimately leads to turning the nation around. You can speak to that. I know you don't have enough time. <laughs> well, I touched on it. I think, I think, first of all, it is really having to redefine the church. Because uh, that is actually our biggest present construct of church actually works against That's right. seeing the ecclesia come forth. Yes. It really does. Because yeah. church is all about church. Yeah. And yet it's all kingdom. Mm. So what happens is that we subconsciously measure people's commitment to the kingdom by how involved they are in church programs. Mm. Absolute mm. travesty yes. and tragedy. Mm. And needs to be radically but we cannot just dismantle it and not have a creative vacuum. So it's about actually giving birth to what I believe the foundational construct is understanding church as being family. And that it exists to actually undergird and restore family. Amen. In the natural. Amen. God's vehicle is still ultimately family. In the natural, that is to be super. You know, households. It was always his thing, right? From Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation 2 and Jeffy in the marriage of the Lamb. It's a family feast. It's all about family. Um, so the relational component. So that's the second thing that we really start working with within the community. Um, the third is that in that environment, family becomes the support. So Ecclesia finds an undergird. And Ecclesia really, in essence, I believe, are meant to be the sons and daughters. But sons are not raised in an institution. Mm. You can teach on sonship all you want, but while our culture is institutionalized, right. really no different from an orphanage, you have intellectual, you have intellectual understanding of sonship, but the sad thing is, is you have no maturation of sonship. So you have right now the contemporary church across the globe knows more about sonship than ever in our 2000 year history, church history as far as I'm under, my understanding is, and yet they're the most selfish, independent, narcissistic, egocentric culture that we have in the church. Why? Because you're giving a message of sonship to orphans. Oh. And what it creates is a culture of entitlement. My God. You see, you cannot raise sons in orphanages. Sons come forth out of family. Secondly, 
the longevity of the work, it's not just about an immediate transformation now, as great as the story of Huntington West Virginia is. What we are working on right now is how do we begin to see that family construct bringing forth dynasty that actually becomes the vehicle that sustains and <coughs> continues to grow transformation generationally. So we've literally talked in our world, this grow world, Churches, we've got a lot of churches now wanting to be a part of our movement and part of our network. One of the first things I sit down with leaders and I say, explain to me how you are family. And secondly, you need to communicate to me that you have a minimum of 100 to 300 to year, 400 year understanding of your mandate. Wow. Oh, my God. We've just <coughs> celebrated the 500 year mark of the Reformation. What about the next five hundred years? Oh, but Jesus is coming back tomorrow. <laughs> Luther was confronted with that statement. And he made this response. He said, you know what? If you're coming back tomorrow, you'll find me working. But I will still plant an apple tree today. Even though he might be coming back tomorrow. So, there's, that's, so that third element really intentionally now intentional relational family discipleship that brings forth ecclesia. Not about your ministry in the church. It's about your administration of the kingdom. Ephesians chapter 4, fivefold ministry was there for the equipping of the saints. Not for ministry. Go back and read your Bibles. I mean, to me, I, I ask myself, have we actually even read the Word of God? Intelligently. We have such a religious mindset that we read that, that the fivefold ministry is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, and then we think the work of ministry is worshiping, leading in the choir, praying for the sick. No, that's the fruit of our lives as priests to every life and every heart. And the word actually in the Greek that's used there for the equipping of the saints to administer. Administer what? The kingdom. The kingdom. And then number four is out of that construct and they're all flow together is then truly understanding the social macro kingdom picture that God has actually given us for communities that are impacted by the kingdom. It's a direct quantitative and qualitative measure in scripture. I'm going to time to unpack it today. But there's actually qualitative and quantitative where we know, we can know whether we have it. A kingdom impact or not. They're actual measurements. Mm. And how far along that we are. And right now, we are sad yes. in a very, very, very desperate place. Yes. But there's hope. Yes. There's hope. Yes. Amen. Yes. The shrine for the tools that you've equipped him with, for the ministry for the successes that he can come and share with us. Father, we pray that as he travels tomorrow to Canada, mm -hmm. that you would be with him. Yes. Uh, comfort him, uh, give him the knowledge and wisdom he needs to prepare for this meeting with government leaders, and prepare their hearts as well. Go ahead of them by your Holy Spirit. Father, we know that uh, whether the plane gets there on time or is a little bit late, it's in your hands. Whether the taxi gets there on time or is a little bit late, it's in your hands. May Sean rest in your spirit so that he can be prepared to inspire the men and women he's going to meet with tomorrow to impact the nation of Canada. We thank you for this, brother. We pray in advance and thank you for the success he's going to have. In the name of your loving son, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 amen.